Make sure you stay to the end of this video so you can participate in one of the giveaways that we have. We're going to touch on the Louisville ladder. This is one of the best ladders in the industry and I'm going to show you a few reasons why. Check it out. Drop a comment on me at the end of this video and you may win one. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today we're going to cover making the door for this cabinet. My last video I showed how to do the cabinet itself and this door is actually as easy or easier than the cabinet. Actually it's easier. This door is simple to make and um, I'm going to show you how to add this type of hardware on it on the next video and that's simple too. You just have to know what kind of hardware to get and there's some tips to putting this hardware in here. But right now I want to cover how to build this door and like I said it's simple. My opening right here is 31 and a quarter from there to there and this is 14 and a quarter from this to this. The total opening. Okay? So that's 14 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter. Simple. My door itself is going to be one quarter inch smaller. I try to keep the same reveal on everything. Now I had to change this reveal just a little bit. I tweak it, but you have enough room. Like I said, we're a quarter inch over. So what I did was I made um, a sixteenth of an inch right here. So I brought that and made the gap a little bit bigger right here. This is five sixteenths instead of um, in, or, or instead of an eighth, it's three sixteenths right here. So that allows this to tilt and go up. The bottom doesn't matter, it's gonna fall, it's gonna go straight in. But the top has to tilt out before it goes up. So I needed a little bit more room. Now I could have taken the back of this board and tapered it. I could have cut a little taper on there, but this was just as easy and I like the way it looks. It stays nice and flat all the way around and you just pull it up. All right, so now that you know what size boards we'll have, I'm gonna have to cut two of these at 14 inches and two of these at 31 inches. Simple. Because I'm going to miter this instead of um, boxing it, it's even going to make it easier. I took my sander and I rounded off the corners to make it look like it's old and not a new modern um, miter cut. If you look right here, I have a quarter inch lip or reveal on this. And I just cut the back out and I wanted it to go further this way because I knew I was going to add something else besides the glass on there and I wanted to have enough room back there for it to sit and still be in the notch where I could use, um, I could use glazing points to, or glazer points to put them in. And you'll see that when we address that. It's super simple, but I left a quarter inch reveal right here. You're going to see me go outside and we'll cut that reveal, we'll cut these boards and we'll put this together. I'm going to unplug my saw so we can set this up. And what I'm gonna do is just back the fence up to where the lines line up right to here. I set my saw up here and I made all my uh, left-handed cuts right here, okay? Now I'm going to turn around and cut my right side. So I'll set this back over here at 45 degrees on this side and I always leave a tiny bit of that line. So we're going to go right on that line and we'll split it. So you can see a tiny portion of the line. but. You're leaving it to where you know exactly where you're at. I'm using my Craig pocket screw jig. And one thing I want to make sure, you see where I put my two holes? I want to make sure I'm not going into this channel. And I, I want to make sure especially that it doesn't leave a hole right here. So what I'm going to do is I take this and I set it in place to uh, line up with the holes. I'm going to use this hole and this hole. So I'm going to bring this back to where a middle hole is not showing. I have to make sure that I go past that. I'll find the edge of my little hole, middle hole and I'll go over just a little bit more, lock it in place. And if I look back here, I can't see that hole either. So that means that when it goes through, it's not gonna come out of this channel and it's not gonna show on the end right here, which is real important. 
I don't need to make two holes on this. It's real small. I'm going to glue it. All I want it to do is get tight so the glue holds it really well. That's your main thing. But these pocket hole uh, setups are fantastic by Craig. And uh, I use them all the time. They're indispensable when it, when it comes to making cabinets. So we'll drill this down. Right here. It's just that easy. Now my two holes are set up right here. And I'm going to take my next short piece. It's easier to do the shorter pieces. If they're all long, well, you got to use your long pieces. Make sure that the channel goes toward the face or the part that you want the screw to be showing in is on the inside, and that's the inside. So I always use wood glue when I'm putting these together. But for this, before I finalize it, I want to just screw it together and make sure everything fits perfectly. Once everything is done and I have the door completed the way I want, I'll take it back off and glue it and screw it back in. It's easy. That's what I love about pocket screws. It'll hold it in place. You can see how things work and then you go from there. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to finish this door. I know I want some type of a shaker look to match my other cabinets, but I want to have it to where it looks old as well. So you're kind of combining the uh, contemporary with the old look. But I think this will do it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go about this, but I had some expanded sheet metal. I'm going to cut a piece out to put in here. That's why I made a large uh, rabbit cut around here so I could um, have room to work with it and put different things in here to test it out. I bought this saw for $49 and uh, basically it's a, it's a, a large, uh, well not a large, it's a, a hand grinder with the, the um, blades on here. So you have two different blades on here that uh, run in different rotations so it can, um, it can cut this pretty well. It's supposed to be made to cut metal and things like that. So I'm going to give her a whirl. We'll cut this out. I'm going to get my measurements real quick and and we'll cut this piece out of here. So I need 29 and an eighth by 12 and 9 sixteenths. So let's get our measurement over here, 29 and 1 eighth. I'm using my uh, Swanson uh, finger guard right here. This thing is, is great for when I'm cutting drywall or anything like that because it protects your finger. If I'm using a razor knife right here with the straight edge, it protects my finger. I don't have to worry about slipping and cutting myself. This, we're going to put this little Harbor Freight saw to the test and see how good she cuts. I'm going to go right over the wood so it kind of keeps it um, sturdy. So when I cut, I can put it right off the edge of this, right to the edge, but as long as I have something sturdy on, on the sides, I'm good. I'm impressed with this little saw. Well worth the $50. It came with the blade and everything. Okay, let's see how this puppy fits. Oh yeah, like a glove. Here is a, a weathered gray. This is the stain I use. What I did was I took a latex paint, a white latex paint, and this was a semi-gloss. It doesn't matter if you use flat, semi-gloss, or whatever. I rubbed it in here with a rag. You can take it with a paintbrush if you want. Brush it all on here, rub it off. What you're doing is washing it so you have a white base. Right after I did that, I took and put the uh, gray on here. This is a stain. You can use a latex paint and put a gray stain over it. It doesn't matter. It's going to work fine. So I rubbed that in, and uh, in certain spots where I wanted the white to to show up more or lighter, I just rubbed it a little, a little harder. And you just, you rub it around and you'll still see the grain in there. That's what I like. Now, this is out the way. And I just sprayed it with a lacquer, a clear lacquer. This is going to keep it from rusting because it's in my bathroom and sometimes it, gets, it may get a little bit damp. And this is raw steel. I'm not going to see this. If I was going to see this, I would fill it in with Bondo 
or fill it in with the plugs they give you and sand that down and then paint it. But uh, you're not even gonna see this because of the way the hinges work on this cabinet. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we put it in. Now, I'm gonna take my mesh and this is my smooth side. So I'm gonna set it down in here. And here is my glass. I got this at Pain in the Glass. It's a, a local glass company that's really good. And we're gonna just take this and set it in here. So, these are my glazer, glazer points. Now pay attention to this. When you put them in here, you wanna keep this flat. You don't wanna push down and possibly chip the end of this uh, glass because glass is delicate on the ends. So what you'll wanna do is take it and set it flush to where it's tight on there and just push it. And if it's really hard to do, you see how I'll rock it back and forth if you have a harder piece. If you're close to a knot or something like that, it's harder. Some pieces are real soft and it just slips right in. Now, if you go to remove this, it's simple to do. You take your knife and you push behind it and that's it. This door came out pretty sharp and when I have light behind it, it's really gonna pop. I've been sold on these Louisville ladders ever since I tried the first one out. This cross step right here has a, a unique head that's unlike any other on the, on the market. It has a rubberized head right here. This right here will not cause damage when you put it up against a painted surface on your wall. Also, it comes down to a V right here, so it will grab onto a pipe and it will not shake back and forth. So you can set it right on a corner of your house, on the inside or outside corners, and it's gonna grab because this part right here goes on the inside corners. This is made to go on an outside corner and it will not damage your drywall or bend your corner bead. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Right here, I can take this and set it up against my cabinets real close and look where it puts me, right on my countertop. So if I need to get up there to work on my crown molding, which I've already done, and I had to put my ladder on there, I used this ladder here because it sets me right there where I can hold my crown molding and I can work off of it even with the countertop in the way. Here is the same designed ladder. I bought this from Walmart and I paid $50 for it, shipping included. I picked it up at my local Walmart. Can't beat that. When I saw that, that was a deal. It was on sale. I couldn't pass it up. But you can still pick these ladders up. Really great prices at Amazon or Walmart.com. Check them out. You won't go wrong with these uh, Louisville ladders. If you have Amazon Prime, you could probably get it shipped free. Walmart, you can get it shipped to a local Walmart by your house and go pick it up. Fantastic deal. These right here are great. This ladder right here is just like the other one. I said you can put it in the corner. Look at it. I can set it right on my corner and I don't have to worry about it damaging anything. I can get right up on my wall. If I wanted to set it on the wall this way, that rubber is going to keep it from marring anything. And this ladder right here is rated at 250 pounds, which is a great ladder. You can't beat it. All right. When you drop a comment, make sure that you hit notifications on there. What I mean by that is right next to the subscription button, when you hit subscribe, you have to hit that bell. That bell is going to allow me to get back with you and it's going to let you know when I have a new video out there. So this time I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick from the first hundred people or first 50 people or whatever. Drop a comment on me. We're going to wait four days and we're going to choose a winner from the first four days um, that the comments are dropped. So you might be number 400. The reason why I'm doing that is because a lot of people have told me they, by the time they get the notification or if they're at work, they can't, um, they can't send a, a comment to me. So we're going to give them a little bit more time to get involved with this. I will see you guys on the next project. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos. Make sure you hit that bell, and if you don't mind, hit like for me. This ladder's Elsie approved, right? Yeah. <laughs>